Russians not paying their frontline soldiers, robbing and looting of locals likely to rise. Dissatisfaction is spreading among the Russian military in the temporarily occupied territories of the Donetsk Oblast. Due to delays in their payments, the National Resistance Center of Ukraine reported. Russian soldiers have been receiving payments irregularly and with delays, with some units not having received any payments at all since December 2023. The delays stem from insufficient funds in Russia's budget, corruption among officers and logistical issues hampering timely cash delivery to operations areas. The lack of payment enrages Russian soldiers on the front lines who resent risking their lives in vain. As a result, some have started refusing combat orders, the National Resistance Center reported. The morale of the Russian occupying forces is declining as evidenced by the fact that the Russian command can no longer motivate its soldiers with money or ideology, the National Resistance Center said. The National Resistance Center has warned Ukrainian civilians in the frontline areas to be vigilant as the payment delays could cause a rise in looting and robbing by Russian soldiers. The humanitarian crisis in Ukraine's temporarily occupied territories is deteriorating. With the economic and social spheres continuing to be the main problems, the National Resistance Center said. Russian soldiers fighting in Ukraine and their families have increasingly been complaining of delayed salary payments. Sirsky throws the best trained reserves of the Ukrainian armed forces to defend Avdiivka. Ukrainian Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief Oleksandr Sirsky has sent the last of the Ukrainian army's trained reserves to defend Avdiivka, the first city that the Russian army could capture in nine months after taking Bakhmut in May 2023. According to Forbes, this refers to the 3rd Assault Brigade of the army, which has been in reserve in Kramatorsk since December. The brigade consists of about 2,000 people in armored vehicles. We are strengthening the defense line, creating additional firing positions and deploying fresh combat forces, confirmed Brigadier General Oleksandr Tarnavsky, commander of the Tavria group of troops in Avdiivka, in his Telegram channel. Meanwhile, the defense of Avdiivka, a key Ukrainian army stronghold in Donbass, has reached a critical point. Russian troops, who have been besieging the city for four months, have begun to break through the Ukrainian defenses and are one step away from cutting the main supply route for the Ukrainian forces. The situation is tense. If we said a few weeks ago that it was difficult but controlled, now it is very difficult. And we can even say that in some places there is a critical situation, said Vitaly Barabash, head of Abdiivka's military administration. According to Forbes, the Ukrainian army forces had two options to withdraw the remnants of the 110th Brigade from the unprotected eastern part of the city and consolidate the defense line in the center of Avdiivka or near the city, or to send in reinforcements and try to push back the much larger Russian forces. As a result, Ukrainian troops decided to stay and fight, which poses a huge risk for Kyiv, the newspaper notes. Russian oligarchs may want to bail out Donald Trump. Amid Donald Trump's growing debt among his legal cases, Russian oligarchs may want to bail out the former president, according to U.S. national security lawyer Mary McCord. Newsweek reports about this. It is noted that in an interview with MSNBC, McCord, who previously served as acting assistant attorney general for national security at the Department of Justice, was asked by host Simone Sanders Townsend, if Trump's financial exposure poses a national security risk. Yes, we are talking about how difficult it might be for him to post this near half a billion dollar bond, but he has certainly plenty of people who might want to bail him out on that. Some of those might be foreign, some of those might be Russian oligarchs, some of those might be people right here in the US, McCord said. McCord added that Trump's fondness of Russian President Vladimir Putin is also cause for concern, saying that there may be other countries that see the possibility of Trump becoming president as a way to earn favors from him. Anytime you are talking about someone who is running for president or holding any elected office and potentially could have some indebtedness or feeling of owing somebody else something, that's very dangerous. Particularly here, as we know his fondness for Putin, his continuing praise of Putin, and the way he governs Russia, and that's something I could very much see people there who have the means to help him out. 
there's plenty of other countries that would like to get some favors from Donald Trump should he become the president again, she said. Ooh.